service has a knot. Yeah. I'm excited to get into the lesson. For those visiting out there, we're going through the book of Acts. Amen. Uh, it's an adventurous book. I hope you are got your seatbelt on and you're ready for a ride. Amen. Uh, my, my father, he preached on Acts 1 through 8 last week. And I hope you're there for that. If not, uh, ask somebody for the notes because it wasn't recorded. And today we're going to be going over Acts 9 through 15. Amen? Come on, brother. Um, I love, actually, the book of Acts is my favorite book. Wow. And um, today people are going to be going out and trick-or-treating. Amen? Amen. And when I was younger, uh, I would go out and I wouldn't say trick-or-treat. I would say trick because uh, everyone's giving treats. I want a trick this time. Uh, and they would give me a treat and be like, oh. But thank you. Uh, but I'll take it. But uh, the title lesson today is Trick or Truth. Wow. Amen. And yes, you do have a decision to be tricked or to receive the truth. Amen. Oh, let's go. Let's go to Acts chapter 9. Talk to me. Right, and let's see a man that was tricked but was brought to the truth. Oh, Amen. Oh, in Acts chapter 9 Preach. and verse 1. Hope you got your Bibles out and you're going to be racing through. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked for letters to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I'm Jesus, whom you're persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Wow. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand in Damascus. For three days, he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. Amen. Wow. I mean, can you imagine the scene? One of the greatest persecutors of the church at that time is going to Damascus. To arrest and possibly kill more Christians. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they, they just killed Stephen, yeah. if you guys were here for last week. Yeah. Uh, the first martyr in, yeah. in the book of Acts. Yeah. And so possibly this guy was coming to your door to murder you. Wow. I mean, this this was one of Jason coming to your door. Oh, oh yeah, bro. This was Saul coming to your door yes. to murder Let's you. go. And on his way, Jesus... Comes and, and appears before him in a great light. The light was so, so intense yes. that he falls to the ground. I don't know if you ever fall to the ground before because of a light that shone on your face. Amen. Who knows? That, that had to be super intense. Right. Yes. But he just falls to the ground and, and his companions are there just speechless. <laughs> like that, everyone's shocked. <laughs> and, and, and Jesus goes, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Wow. Why do you say his name twice? Because it was an indication of disappointment. Wow. Uh, Martha, Martha. Wow. Simon, Simon. Wow. Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting wow. me? I'm so wow. disappointed. Wow. He goes, who, who are you? Who's, who's disappointed in me? I'm Jesus, whom you're persecuting. He's struck with blindness. And for three days, he's blind and fast. Why is he blind for three days? <laughs> Come on, bro. Why is he blind for three days? Because Jesus wanted to stamp into his mind that Jesus had died for three days and was resurrected on the third day. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Let's Come keep on. reading. In verse 10. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called him in a vision. Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul for his praying. In a vision, he had seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered. I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. Right. He's come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name if you didn't know Jesus. Yeah. But the Lord said to Ananias, go! This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Whoa. Come on. How would you like that calling? Right. Wow. I'm going to show you how much you're going to suffer. Oh, baby. Wow. Well, guess what? That is your calling. Mm. Right here, Saul yeah. fast for three days. I, I think for any any disciple studying the Bible, you gotta fast before you get baptized. Yep. All right, you gotta make a sincere, solid decision yeah. before you make a lifelong decision. Amen. Mm. Yeah. 
Uh, you got you got to fast. Uh, it, this isn't a phase. To become a disciple, it's not a yeah, phase. Right. It, it doesn't come and go. This is a decision that you're going to hold on to for the rest of your life. Wow, come on, bro. Verse 17. Then Ananias went up to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow. Immediately, something like scales fall from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Ananias comes to him, places his hands on him, and then scales fall from his eyes. Mm. Come on. He's able to see again. Jesus wanted him to understand that you couldn't see. Yeah. You were in the darkness. You were tricked. You didn't know right, the truth. Right. Now you're blind for three days. Wow. Yeah. Now scales fall from his eyes, and he can see again. And, and he gets preached to by Ananias. I mean, Ananias was probably pretty frightened right here. And just preaching, like, holding on for dear life. <laughs> and Saul gets up. He goes, oh, I need to repent and, and, and become a disciple of Jesus. He gets baptized. And what's the first thing he does after he gets baptized? He eats some food. Amen. But he prioritizes his spiritual things before putting food into his stomach. Yeah. 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 yeah, maybe you didn't eat breakfast this morning. But that's all right. You're coming to eat this morning. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Today after church, get your mind off of lunch. Let's get into the word and let's eat up. Amen. Uh, Saul, he came out of being tricked and he came to know the truth. Yes. I don't know if you ever studied the Bible and you're just so blown away. I remember going to Brazil in 2011. Wow. And uh, we, we started the church there. And uh, in Brazil... <clears throat> We, we, we didn't really know the language, but we're just going on faith. Uh, and we go up, we want to order some café con leche. It's almost like Spanish. Right? And, uh, and we go, and we're just trying to order it. And, and, and we got to know that the person there is actually Chia Suja. Uh, and that's uh, Tia Susia uh, in Spanish. The, the, the dirty uh, aunt. Uh, it, was a, it was a nickname that the students gave, not that she gave herself. And... Uh, <laughs> But she served the best cup of coffee, and, and we didn't, we're trying to get this awesome cup of coffee. And all of a sudden, this guy comes up. His name is Danilo, mm. and, and he's like, "You guys, we know that guy. You guys speak English? He goes, let me help you out here, you know." And he orders all uh, the co a coffee with with milk, cup of coffee, and uh, <laughs> and and then he starts studying the Bible. He learns that he grew up his whole life being tricked. Wow. Uh, he he thought that to come to know God, you just had to say a prayer in your heart wow. and accept Jesus in your heart. Uh -oh. He goes, no way. you got to have faith. Repent of all your sins. Become a disciple and get water baptized for the forgiveness yeah. of your sins. Yeah. Disappears for six months. Yeah. Oh. Right. I can't believe this. is too much. Yeah. Come, comes comes right. back after six months. He goes, you, you guys, I'm ready to study the Bible. Like, Where were you? Yeah. Where were you? I was actually reviewing the notes from every Bible Whoa. study. Uh, I, I put her in, at that time they didn't have the phones with the, the voice recorders on them, you know, with the nice iPhone or Samsung yeah, yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. it is. Um, they had just had like a voice recorder, but he kind of like hit it on the side. And plus, oh. plus record every Bible study. He was listening to all the Bible studies for six months. Oh my gosh. I mean, he couldn't get away from the truth. Oh yes. my goodness. And he goes, this, this is, even though I believe in this stuff, I've been tricked my whole life. My whole family's tricked. He goes, I can't believe it. I, I, I got to come to know the truth. And that's our first point, the treat of the truth. Come on, bro. The treat of the truth. Yes. Love that. Yes. Love that. And he goes, man, I, 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 need, I need to just slop up this awesome treat. Of the truth. <laughs> um, yes. He repents of his sin, becomes a disciple, gets baptized, amen. Come on. Uh, he eventually, after a few, after a year or so, he starts leading the campus ministry there in Sao Paulo. Oh, wow. Then he gets married to Carol. Uh, they go train in, Dal in, in, in Texas, and then they go to plant the church in Lima, Peru. Come on. Uh, he's doing incredible things. Why? Because he accepted the truth of truth. Amen. He didn't want to be tricked his whole life. He wanted to come to know the truth, and God is blessing him. Um, in verse 19, All right. we have our second point. The trick. Not to preach. Mm. Come on. In verse 19, in the second part, it says, Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. Not 
Maybe he is the son of God. Right, right. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on his name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in the masses by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. Wow. I mean, I, I mean, Paul just, he just starts growing more and more powerful. Mm -hmm. You may ask yourself, how do I grow spiritually? We'll imitate what Paul did. Mm -hmm. Paul, number one, he spent time with the disciples. I don't think he just went to church and, and, and left and went home. He Come spent time, he spent some on, good God. time with the disciples. Yes. I think we, we, if we want to grow spiritually, spend time with the disciples, not only during the meeting, meetings of the body, right. Right. but spend some awesome time with the disciples. Get to know them outside the meetings of the body. It's easy to be a disciple in the church. Right. But when you get to see the lives of people denying themselves, doing what Caleb was talking about during, during contribution, right. really denying yourself, saying no, you're like, man, these people are really helping me. And it helps you grow and you're encouraged in the Lord. Yeah. Come on. But number two, he just started preaching right after he got right. baptized. Mm. Let's go. Ask yourself, what if I don't know all the answers to all the people asking me the questions while I'm preaching? <laughs> well, that's going to force you to get back into the word. Yes. yes. And, and learn what you do not know. Yes. And you're going to grow more and more powerful yes. as you preach the word. Come on, Billy. No, you can't be tricked. Don't trick yourself. Like I, I don't know if I'm gonna. I don't know if I'm gonna know the answers to all these things. Maybe you don't. Just say you don't, and I'm gonna go back and study that. Yeah. Don't trick yourself. It's time to preach the word and not fall into the trick not to preach. Amen. Right. Uh, let's keep reading. Verse 23. After many days had gone by, there was a cons conspiracy among the Jews to kill him. But Saul learned of their plan. Day and night they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him. But his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. Right here is very interesting. In 2 Corinthians 11, verse 32 to 33, Paul actually references this moment in his, in his walk with God and says this was a time of weakness. Wow. He was lowered in a basket, right? Yeah. And, he, he, I mean, you can imagine, like, it's kind of embarrassing being a, a little ball in a basket and Aww. going through, like, a dirty wall and... And uh, it says it was a time of weakness. Mm. Uh, but Paul, he goes, this time of weakness actually helps me depend on the Lord. Mm. Maybe going through a time of weakness, yeah. it's time to depend on the Lord. Yes. He was in a basket. Right. He was the first basket case, amen? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep reading. Verse 26. When he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. But Barnabas <laughs> took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. I mean, this is awesome. Paul, Barnabas just takes him under his wing and uh, it just presented him before the apostles. This guy really is a disciple, and no one believed it. But actually, between verse 25 and 26, yes, yep. if you look into it in Galatians yep, 1, verse right. 11 through 18, this is a time period of three years. Oh, he gets wow. baptized, starts preaching, and then there's three years that's before right. he actually goes to Jerusalem right. and appears before the Educate, apostles. bro. Give us the nug. Well, in Galatians 1, 11 through 18, mm -hmm. it talks about how he went to Arabia mm -hmm. and not to Jerusalem. He goes to Arabia. Why Arabia? Well, Galatians 4, verse 25, it says that in Arabia is Mount Sinai. Oh. Have you ever heard of that? But that's where Moses received revelation from the Lord. Right. And, that's, and then he comes back and preaches to the Israelites. Right. Wow. Paul goes for three years to Mount Sinai, receives re re revelation from Jesus wow. to be able to come back and preach to the what? Gentiles and be that Moses wow. figure to wow. the Gentiles. Wow. Yes, yeah. come on, bro. That's awesome. Then they send... After there's just so much commotion, they, they sent Saul off to Tarsus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the disciples just, even after three years, they can't believe that he's a disciple. Right. Uh, That's true. And then in verse 31, chapter 9, verse 31, Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. Living in the fear of the Lord, encouraged by the Holy Spirit, and increased in numbers. Mm. Right here, it's incredible. They're enjoying a time of peace. Why? Because they just converted their greatest persecutor. <laughs> We're persecuting the preacher now, amen? <laughs> and now it's, uh, hey, let's enjoy this, amen? Right. And we're going to enjoy the holidays, but after we work hard, amen? Yeah. Um, but it's pretty awesome because they go from Jerusalem to Judea to Galilee and Samaria. Jesus told them to go from Jerusalem to Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, this is only chapter 9. They're in Judea, Samaria, 
they just got the ends of the earth left, amen? Mm. Amen. Oh, come on. Uh, but they're getting there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> come on, Joey. Come on. The trick not to preach, we got to preach the word. Mm. Peter appears in chapter 10. Chapter, actually, chapter 9, in the middle of chapter 9, Peter heals a few people, resurrects Tabitha. Nice. Uh, chapter 10, uh, he has a vision that, chapter 10 and chapter 11, he has a vision that even the Gentiles can be saved. Wow. So for the first seven years wow. after the church had began, yeah. they were only preaching to Jews. Yeah. And so for seven years, there was, there's a church just full with a bunch of Jews. And amen, we got some Jews in the house, amen? Come on. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> but we're grateful they Come repented and started preaching to the Gentiles, and that's why we're all here. Yeah. Yeah. But chapter 10 and 11, Peter understands that the Gentiles also can be saved. And we'll pick it up in chapter 11, verse 19. Come on. It says, now those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. Verse 20. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. Whoa. I mean, you had some wild disciples right here <laughs> taking a leap of faith and just, just preaching yeah. the word wherever they're going. And, and we're grateful because most of us are here because they preach to the Gentiles. Yeah. You know? yeah. um, verse 21. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. Come on. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Come on. Right here, he, they, they, they have so many converts in Antioch. I mean, so many Gentiles coming to, to hear the word and become disciples of Jesus Christ. Yeah. They go, wow, we're hearing all types of awesomeness in Antioch. Yeah. So Barnabas, why don't you go ahead and take care of that situation right there? Yeah. They, they send Barnabas off to Antioch. Barnabas gets there. He can't believe his eyes. There's a great number of people that have come to the yeah. Lord. When the Bible says great number. It really means great number. Come on. <laughs> Some historians say that the church in Antioch grew to twenty-five to fifty thousand disciples. Wow. Can you imagine awesome. going to San Francisco, going back to San Francisco? There's twenty-five thousand or fifty thousand disciples. Come on. Like, I'm encouraged. I, I'm pretty glad about this. Right? Right, right. I think that was a little understatement that Barnabas was glad. Right, yeah. right, right. But he was glad, and he says he saw the grace of God and what it had done. Mm. Another translation talks about the evidence of the grace of God. Mm. Now, what's the evidence of the grace of God? Number one, it's transformed lives. Yeah. Yep. When somebody repents of their sin, that's the greatest miracle that could ever right. happen in the universe. Wow. You know, some people are trying to, trying to ask for a sign, uh, trying to see if I can talk in tongues or trying to right, see right, if right. Uh, prophecy or somebody getting healed. The greatest miracle isn't any of that. Right. The greatest miracle that could happen is somebody repenting of their sins, becoming a disciple, and getting baptized. Yeah. Come, on, Come on, bro. Wow, this is so awesome. It's the grace of God. Yeah. And also, the grace of God is the great numbers. Yeah. Yes. When a church is not growing, it's a lack of the grace of God. That's right. You go to church and you see the same people that you saw years ago. Man, there's no grace in that church. Come on. You see a church that's constantly growing. I remember I went to Brazil. After four years, I come back. I didn't know anybody here in L.A. <laughs> I start meeting disciples and go, wow, this is incredible. <laughs> this is the grace of God, right? Yeah. And here in the South region, we're going to keep growing and we're going to yeah. increase come on, in number. Come on, come on, come on with you. Come on, Joey. We'll Joey. reading right here. But it talks about how the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Yeah. Disciple is a Christian. They're right. one of the same. It's just a nickname. Exactly. Now, it was a derogatory name given yeah. to the disciples right. to make fun of them and persecute them. But, but it's because Barnabas brought back Saul. Saul just, I encouraged Barnabas in a great way. They start preaching the word mm. like maniacs. <laughs> and, and people are hearing, and I, I think in a big way, the word Christian came about because Paul was just preaching the word so intensely. Right. Wow. Here in the South, I can't wait for persecutors to get so ticked at us yeah. that they're going to start inventing new words that change history. Wow. Wow. They're going to talk about us, amen. Come on. Right. Oh, that's awesome. 
But if you want to be a Christian, you got to be a disciple. You can't say, hey, I'm, I'm a Christian, but not really a disciple. Not really like what those guys in the first century did. Well, then you're not really a Christian. Right, 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 right. Christianity is a lifestyle. It's not just a belief. Right. Okay, Joseph. In verse 27, we'll talk about the treat of giving. During this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and through the spirit predicted a severe famine would spread over the whole entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius. The disciples, as each one was able, decided to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in Judea. This they did, sending their gift to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. I mean, this is, this is incredible. There's, there's a famine. Yeah. Now, we've kind of gone through a little bit of a famine here in, in our lifetime, the pandemic. Right. That's right. And they go through a famine, and this famine was so intense, and it actually happened um, between 41 and 45 AD. Wow. And they say that it was especially intense for the Israelites because of many political reasons. But the church in Antioch, a younger church, sends aid to Jerusalem, Judea, an older church. And they were just so fired up for, about what was happening that they received the word of God. They became disciples. And they're so fired up. They want to give back to uh, God's people. Come on. And it says that each one gave according to his ability. Each disciple gave. Every disciple gave for missions. Amen. Here we got, we got a love offering coming up November 21st. And we asked everybody individually, bro, how, how much can you give without faith? And maybe with a little bit of faith, how much can you give? And each disciple made the decision in their heart, how much can they give to God and for the work of God? Right. Everyone made that decision. And, and we're all going to give according to our ability. Yes. Now, I love the scriptures in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. It talks about how the Macedonian churches, they gave even beyond their ability. Yep. Right. So according to your ability is not with faith. <laughs> beyond your ability is with a little bit of faith, amen? amen. Wow. And, and all of us, we're giving just a little bit beyond our ability, amen? Wow. And, and God's going to provide. It's awesome what we have here in the church. Yeah. Yeah. What we have here in the U.S. is, is incredible. Right. Uh, I remember being in Mexico. Yeah. We moved back a, uh, uh, about a year ago, me and my wife, Maggie. And uh, we, were, we were working for the church down there in Mexico. And the pandemic started, like, yeah. when we're about to get married. It's like, wow. Oh my gosh, like, I wanted to have an off. I mean, we do have an awesome marriage, but you know what I mean, like have all these benefits and everything. Uh, but um, the pandemic hits, mm. they cut our salary by 30%. Mm. Um, and we're like, man, this is tough. By the grace of God, there was a stimulus check. And even though I was down there, I got some of the stimulus check. Uh, but um, both, all the other disciples in Mexico, some of them lost their jobs permanently. Wow. And get it, didn't get any government aid. Yes. Wow. Yep. Right. And and that's what we're that, that's what we're doing, guys. We're giving. We, we have much to give. We have so much here yeah. in the U.S. I love the scripture that says, "To much who has been given, yeah. much is expected." Yeah. I remember I read that scripture in Mexico, and I go, "That's talking about the U.S. disciples." <laughs> Why? Because they've given so much. We're in the most powerful country in the world. Yeah. You guys have no idea. We influence so much of the world, mm -hmm. and. <clears throat> We've been given so much, and so that scripture directly applies to us. Much yes. is expected. Uh, yes. yeah. Yeah. And we're going to back, why? Because we're so grateful. Yeah. 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 And we want to we give to all these brothers and sisters around the world. Let's let's knock out the love offering, guys. Yeah. If you got it today, knock it out today. Right. You got it next week, knock it out next week. But definitely a week before the deadline, amen, because yes. we want to make the, the work of our leader a joy and not a burden. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. And uh, God is going to do incredible things. Come it's on. a treat to give. It's more yes. blessed to give than it is to receive. It's yes. a treat. Come on, Come on. Right here in Acts chapter 12. Come on, Joey. Come on, Joey. With you, bro. Come, Come on. on. Joey. In Acts chapter 12 and verse 1, it says, It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church. Intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. I mean, how could, how could a sovereign God allow the first apostle to be put to death? I mean, that, that, that's pretty intense. I'm sure some of the brothers, they were distraught. Yeah. But I really believe that no man dies for a lie. Yeah. 
Wow. On campus, I told this guy, I was debating this guy on campus, and I go, no man dies for life. He's like, that's not true. Muslims die all the time. And I go, actually, you're right, so let me rephrase it. <laughs> I go, no man dies for a lie that he knows a lot that, that is a lie. Right. You don't die for a lie and you know it's a lie. Right. Right here, these, these apostles died and they didn't just die for a story that they heard like many Muslims do. They, they hear a story, they're right. totally convinced about it and, and, and they're willing to die for it. And yes, that is true. Yes. But the apostles, it's a totally different situation. Right. They saw with their eyes, they touched with their hands, mm -hmm. Jesus, the resurrected Jesus. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And they all died a martyr's death, except John. Because they believed that Jesus truly resurrected from the dead. Come on. Yeah. Right here, the, all the disciples, Peter's also arrested. All the disciples are praying for Peter. Yeah. Pe Peter is woken up in the jail cell. Uh, and he comes back to the house where they're all praying for him. Mm. Come on. And um, it's incredible because it says that they are all astonished. Now, they're all earnestly praying for Peter. But it says that they're all astonished. God answers their prayer, and they're blown away by it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the the truth of prayer is my fourth point. Come on, bro. The truth of prayer. Prayer is Come incredible. On. Uh, I don't know if you have an impossible prayer that God has answered. Uh, I remember praying that that's Amen, Bill. Uh, get married soon. Uh, but uh, I remember praying. I go, God, I, I wanna I wanna personally help five people come to know you wow. and one time it happened but then another time it didn't happen another year and, and I think my faith got a little little it, it got hit right there yeah. and uh, so in 2019 I go you know what I'm gonna put it back on the list for impossible prayers yeah. put it back on the list in Mexico I go okay I want to convert five people personally now I'm gonna help many other people right but personally I want to help five people come to know you and become disciples yeah. that year God answered my prayer wow. and five people came but what are your prayers? Do you, have, have you taken off somebody you thought was impossible off your prayer list that would become a disciple and you're no longer praying for him? Come on. Guys, we, we have about one month before the turkey coma. Amen. God can do impossible things, amen? Yeah. Amen. Let's pray radically. And God, maybe he might not answer your prayer in the way you'd like, just like these disciples. Right. But let me tell you something. When he answers it, you're going to be astonished. Come on, bro. In verse 24, uh, Herod actually dies because he doesn't give praise to God. In verse 24, it says, but the word of God continued to spread and flourish. Right. 25. When Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, they returned from Jerusalem, taking with them John, also called Mark. Oh. Now, who, who's this guy, John Mark? Right, <laughs> right. Well, we see him right here. They take him with the with their mission team, but we also see him in verse twelve because that they are actually praying in Mary's house when they were praying for Peter, and and he's the son of Mary. So there they see him. But also we see him in Mark chapter 14, verse 51. It says that a young man, while Jesus was arrested, fled off and somebody grabbed his garment. So he actually fled naked. You know, that's where we saw him. Maybe we saw a little bit too much of him, but, but you know, that's where we saw him. Um, but in, verse, in chapter 13, verse 1, it says... Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. When they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. The two of them, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. Here they, they, they go on the mission team. And, and I think it's incredible because it says that the Holy Spirit sends Paul and Barnabas off. Mm. We got to understand, guys, whenever there's a mission team, whether we send it off or whether we receive it, it's the Holy Spirit working and sending these people to different places. Yeah. We have Caleb, Liz, Quentin, Belinda, Jen, Bella, come here to the south. Yeah. Now, they weren't sent by men. This wasn't a man-made man event. Amen. But this was this happened by the Holy Spirit, and I believe that God is working incredible things in the South region because of the Holy Spirit Come working here. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. They go on their, their, their mission team. <laughs> and point number five is the treat of effective evangelism. Come on, bro. Come on. The treat of effective evangelism. They go and preach 
in this place in Paphos. And there they meet a guy named Bar Jesus. Oh. And who's Bar Jesus? Well, Bar means son of, right? Yeah. Uh, I remember on, on a site I created just a, a username and I called myself Bar Lance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> son of Lance. Uh, but they meet this guy, Bar Jesus, right? And he's a sorcerer. He's actually, he actually just is teaching false doctrine and preaching false doctrine. And uh, Paul and Barnabas, they, they try to convert this influential leader, the pro council. And while they're trying to convince him, Bar Jesus comes up and he tries to dissuade the pro counselor from believing in Jesus. And so they strike him with blindness and say he's full of all kinds of trickery and deceit. But he, he strikes with blindness so much that he can't even see the light of the sun. So it's not like you're blind and you can kind of see like light a little bit, but he, he can't see nothing. Wow. And uh, then the pro council believes and becomes a disciple. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what's awesome is that Paul and Barnes, they focused on opinion leaders. They focused on influential people when they preached the word of God. Now, as Caleb here in the South, when Kip was leading Cal State Long Beach, oh, in three months time, he converted along with the ministry, 50 people. In three months, 50 people got baptized. Come on. And I asked him, I go, how, how did that happen? Yeah. Did he just advance the studies like super fast? Uh, you know, oh let's just God. do five studies right now. Uh, I, I don't know how I did it. And Caleb goes, no, he, he just focused on the influential and opinion leaders. Mm. You focus on opinion leaders, then they'll also double the work that, or triple or quadruple the work that you're doing. Mm. And so you can all focus on opinion people and, and, and disciple so many other people. Right. <laughs> So it's the treats of effective evangelism. We got we got to reach out to the opinion leaders, the influential people. Yeah. I think I think it's it's a trick it's when you're intimidated by somebody and you choose not yeah. to share with them. It's true. You're, you're you're being tricked, it's just true. like Bar Jesus was full of trickery. Mm. You're being tricked yeah. and not sharing with the people. We got to be bold. We got to be courageous, and we got to understand it's a treat. We start converting. Mm incredible opinion leaders yeah. they're gonna they're gonna be able to help us convert everybody else and take care of everybody else yes. amen yes. but we got to go after those people yes. um, paul and barnabas they start preaching in the city of antioch now that's a different city that's not antioch that's a, it's another antioch the city in antioch and the people they, they want to praise them they start calling paul and, and, and barnabas zeus and hermes oh, and uh, they, they they want to uh they start sacrificing to them and he goes, no, don't wow. sacrifice them. And while they're telling them not to sacrifice, they continue to sacrifice to them. Uh, some Jews come and they stir up the fellowship and they actually start persecuting Paul and Barnabas. And actually two of the points where they stone Paul for his message. I mean, they're super emotional. One minute worshiping, next minute they're stoning Paul. Um, Paul gets thrown out the city and they think he's dead outside the city. <laughs> And uh, Paul, after they're just sitting there looking at him, he gets up, whether he was resurrected or whether he just he's just an incredible beast. Um, he goes back into the city and continues to preach. Now, that's a man of God, amen. Uh, but uh, in chapter 15, Paul and Barnabas, they go to Antioch, go back to Antioch. Come on, Come on, Joseph. And there's a huge disagreement about what it means to be saved. Now, some people said you just have to have faith, repent, and get baptized. Other people said you have to have faith, repent, and get baptized, and be circumcised. Mm. Go, what is that? <laughs> Paul and Barnabas, they go to Jerusalem. They, start, they talk to the apostles, and, and they say, oh, we, we got to get help. Can you guys help us out? Right. Peter supports them, and finally James, the half-brother of Jesus, gives the final decision and says, hey, we shouldn't make it difficult for the Gentiles to be saved. And uh, we pick it up in chapter 15, in verse 36, after they, they want to go and start some more churches. And um, in verse 36 of chapter 15, it says, sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with him, but Paul did not think it was wise to take him but because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took, took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. He went through Syria and Sicilia, strengthening the churches. Right here, we have an intense moment. Yes, John Mark had deserted them beforehand. And they want to go on a new mission trip. 
And Barnabas is like, hey, we got to take John Mark. And Paul goes, absolutely not. He deserted us. You know, I want to take Silas in verse 32. It says that he's a prophet in verse 32. So he takes Silas and they're commended by the believers. Now, who was right? Was it, was it Barnabas? Was it Paul? Who was right? I mean, you, you can't get away from the fact that the brother or the believers, they commended Paul right. in his work. Yeah. But I think it'd be a great injustice yeah. if we were to say that that the heart of Barnabas was not in a good place for his, his brother, John Mark. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but uh, let's take a look and we'll finish out here in 2 oh, Timothy on, chapter 4. Come on, Joey. Come on, Joey. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 6. Come on, bro. Now, this is written in 66 AD at the end of Paul's life. A year later, Paul actually is beheaded and dies. In verse 6, Paul writes, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. Now, Paul, he knows his time is near. In verse 9, he tells Timothy, Do your best to come to me quickly. For Demas, because he, he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus to Demalcia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. Wow. There he is, John Mark. I sent Tychus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with carpets at Troas and my scrolls, especially the parchments. <clears throat> so right here, Paul goes, hey, these guys, Demas, he was a preacher, but he fell away. And he deserted me to go, to go to this world. But Crescens and Titus, actually, these guys were sent out to different churches to help these different churches. Only Luke is with me. So you got Paul right here talking to Timothy. Hey, go ahead and get John Mark. Why? Because he's helpful in my ministry. I'm only here with Luke. Luke's doing a great job. He's a doctor. But, but I really need John Mark. Uh, and right here we see that Barnabas actually restored our brother John Mark wow. to be strengthened in the Lord and be helpful in Paul's ministry. Wow. Wow. Um, Mark not only helps Paul at the end of his ministry, but Mark actually writes Mark, which is the first written gospel, and John Mark in 70 AD is recorded in history that in Alexander, Egypt, the city, he was martyred, and they had a rope tied around his neck, and he was dragged until his death. Wow. Why? Because you don't die for a lie. Mm. Come on. All the apostles, similar deaths, but they all didn't die for a lie. I think we got to make a decision today to not be tricked by false doctrine. Come on. Right. Make a decision today that, that I'm going to get right with God as soon as possible if you're visiting. Yes. I'm going to get right with God before the turkey coma. Yeah. Yes. In the next couple weeks. And let's go after the truth. Come on, bro. And not be tricked, but accept the truth, amen. It's got to be.